On this mission, we will learn to taxi and launch from a carrier on the Boeing T-45C aircraft created by Virtual Naval Air Operations for DCS, following the procedures of the NATOPS flight manual of the real aircraft. The step numbers, when provided, corresponds to those of the NATOPS manual, and are provided to allow future reference to it. The procedure includes the following sections. 8.6. Prior to taxi. 8.7. Taxi. 8.8. Before catapult hookup. 8.9. Catapult hookup. 8.12. Catapult launch. 7.11. Climb and cruise. Please, be aware that you can press spacebar to interrupt long texts, in case you already know that part of the procedures. If the cockpit interior is too dark, you can activate a flashlight with right control plus L, that will illuminate the area near the cross cursor. If the yellow cross cursor is not visible, press left alt plus left shift plus C to make it show. Previous to taxi, you should complete these final checks. 1. Control augmentation. Set to the all position. Unfortunately, this switch is not simulated yet. In the real aircraft, the control augmentation system performs four functions. Yaw damping, turn coordination, speed brake to stabilator interconnect, and rudder trim. 2. Anti-skid switch. Set to off, as it is not needed on a carrier deck. 3. Flight controls. Wipeout. Move the control stick left to right and front to back, checking that the control surfaces move accordingly. Move the rudder pedals left and right and confirm that the rudder moves likewise. 4. Trim. Set. A. Rudder and aileron trim. Check they are in neutral. B. Stabilator. Set to 3.5 degrees nose up, for catapult launch. Five. Flight controls. Wipe out a second time, to confirm that trimming didn't affect them. Six. Verify trim settings again. Press spacebar to continue. 7. Canopy. Closed, locked, light out. Close it by clicking on the highlighted handle. The canopy advisory should go out. 9. Ejection seat. Armed. The safe armed handle is located on the right side of the seat. Safe is the upward position, where a mechanical lock prevents activation of the ejection handle. The downward position is armed, and allows seat ejection. 11. Parking brake. Deselect. Click on the parking brake handle, so that it fully retracts and rotates. We are now ready to taxi. Advance throttle to about 70% and once the desired taxi speed is reached, retard throttle a bit. Taxi slowly as the deck can be quite cramped. Press and hold the nose wheel button, with the S key, to have a tighter turn radius. For this mission we will taxi towards catapult number 3, see diagram on briefing. Good, now turn left, and proceed towards the stern of the ship. Now turn right, towards the deflector plate of catapult number 4. Good. Now turn right again, towards catapult number 3. Over the catapult track stands the plane director, in a yellow shirt. He will use arm signals for left or right turns, to align your nose wheel along the catapult track. You are now almost at catapult number 3, press the wheel brakes with your rudder pedals or the W key, and stop. Before taxi onto the catapult, complete the takeoff checklist. 1. Control augmentation. Check it is on the all position. Unfortunately, this switch is not simulated yet. 2. Anti-skid switch. Confirm it is set to off. 3. Flap slats. 
set to full. Do not launch with less flaps, or your aircraft will drop excessively once clear of the catapult. 4. Trim. Check. A. Rudder and aileron. Confirm they are at zero. 4B. Stabilator. Check it's at 3.5 degrees nose up. 5. Canopy. Check it is closed, locked and the advisory light is out. 7. Ejection seat. Confirm it is armed. Release brakes. Increase throttle to begin approach the catapult track. Use minimum power required to keep the aircraft rolling. With the help of the plane director's signals, align the aircraft with the catapult track while advancing slowly. When signaled by the plane director, press the wheel brakes and stop. Wait for the plane director to give you the signal to lower the launch bar. Place the launch bar switch to extend. The green launch bar advisory light will illuminate. Once the crew has attached the holdback bar to our nose gear, the plane director will move to the side. Following the director's signals, taxi forward slowly to position the launch bar over the shuttle. Significant power, as much as 100% RPM, may be required. When the launch bar drops over the shuttle, the aircraft will be stopped as the holdback engages the catapult buffer. Reduce power to idle when signaled by the plane director. Wait for the plane director's signal to retract the launch bar. Place the launch bar switch on retract. The bar will retract as soon as the aircraft leaves the deck, ready for the landing gear to be retracted. We are now ready to launch. Since events will happen rather quickly, let's review the launch procedure. As soon as the aircraft leaves the deck, grasp the stick in its pre-trimmed position and allow the aircraft to rotate to a flyaway attitude with a minimum of 4 aft stick movement. Retract the gear as soon as possible to reduce drag, by clicking its lever or pressing the G key. Avoid any large longitudinal control movements as the aircraft becomes airborne. Yet be prepared to make minor attitude corrections as necessary and correct any aircraft wing drop that may occur. OK, you are now ready to launch. Perform a smooth, but rapid cycle of flight controls ensuring full deflection in all axes. Check all engine and flight instruments for normal indications and operation. The plane director should be signaling to rev up the engine. Increase throttle to maximum power. You should now give to the plane director the signal to launch, which is a pilot salute, with the keys left control plus left shift plus S, and then wait a few seconds for the catapult to launch your aircraft. On the air. Retract the landing gear with the G key or by clicking the highlighted handle. Once a positive rate of climb is established, execute a slight turn to stay clear of the ship's path. Climb to 500 feet and then fly parallel to the ship's heading, 30 degrees. 
We are near 170 knots, retract the flaps using the HOTAS or the F key. Continue straight ahead at 500 feet and 300 knots, paralleling the ship until 7 nautical miles from the carrier. Maintain a parallel heading to the carriers, 30 degrees, until 7 miles from the carrier. You have reached 300 knots. Maintain this speed until 7 miles. You are now at 500 feet. Maintain this altitude until 7 miles from the carrier. You are now at 7 nautical miles from the carrier. You may now climb along your planned route and accelerate to cruise speed. Congratulations, you have successfully finished this training mission. On the next mission we will learn the case I carrier recovery procedure. For now please exit the training by pressing the spacebar key.